the vast majority of people that I expect to see in the celestial kingdom are not going to have been members of our faith in this life. What happens after we die? Find out next time on Saints Unscripted. No, just kidding. I don't know. This is the question we're talking about today, though. Oh, it's been a while yeah, since we've we done an episode about this. Oh, yeah. We're going to introduce ourselves. I'm Caitlin. I'm David. I'm Lauren. <laughs> oh, he's, he's doing a dance. Never mind. Do you want to do that again? It, rem- <laughs> it reminds me of that. <laughs> that video from like the 90s of like the kids that would do their I'm Steven and then they do their little dance and... <laughs> like like intro to like a Editor 90s put in, sitcom put in the or clip. something hi my name's Katrina and my name is Hugh I'm Sarah I'm Emma and so I'm Joe to you uh, it was making me think of Bluey mom similar similar yeah, Dad, but like, da, 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 go back 30 years. Maybe that's how yeah. we introduce ourselves when we get to the afterlife. I mean, you never know. It could be a little fun. Great segue back yeah. into the topic. Thanks, <laughs> I like thanks that. Thanks for keeping us bringing track. us back. <laughs> but it's been a while since we've done an episode about kind of yeah. the afterlife, I think. Our outlook on the afterlife as members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is not exactly the norm when it comes to the Christian views, right? It's, it's a little more than than heaven and hell. We pass away. And then we go to the spirit world where our spirit and our body is separate and we're kind of just in this spirit world hanging out for a while. Then after that comes the resurrection where we're just our, hanging out. In the we're just hanging world. out. If you're familiar with our doctrine, we, you know that in our, our, uh, our teachings about heaven are not dichotomous. It's not just heaven and hell. It's the celestial kingdom at the top, the terrestrial kingdom and the telestial kingdom. And then there's outer darkness, which... You don't really need to worry about because none of you. That's a pretty <laughs> rare place to go. <laughs> yes. Um, so anyway, that's just a quick backdrop for our discussion today. But we want to really talk about more of um, what happens after that, right? Yeah. Like what happens after the final judgment, after we've been assigned uh, or after we inherit a kingdom. So well, well, what do you guys think? What, what, what is eternity going to be like? No, yeah, I definitely, I don't know if you guys relate to this, but when I was a kid, um, I had like crippling anxiety about eternity, like Mm. the concept of eternity. Maybe I was just having an existential crisis as an eight year old. I don't know. (laughs) But I just remember one night just like laying in my bed, absolutely panicking about the concept of being alive forever. That just like scared me so badly. And I woke, I went into, the living room and my dad was in there watching football and I was just like dad and I like told him about all this <laughs> and I was and my football. dad my poor dad was probably like are you okay like what is you are like really young um and I was just talking about how like are we gonna get bored are we gonna like I, and it just like freaked me out so badly and my dad was really nice and he talked to me he's like I don't think that it's gonna be we're not gonna like it's gonna be very different than how we are experiencing life now he's like is there gonna be football in heaven he's like i don't know but we're gonna be happy no matter what um and that did bring me some comfort but even still to this day i don't know what it is like the concept of me thinking about being alive for eternity sometimes freaks me out a little bit i definitely 100 percent relate to that Do you? so having come from catholicism where it's just like heaven and hell right and it's pretty straightforward and you know, there's there's not these three different kingdoms. And then having to learn about these three different kingdoms as as a convert. And really, the missionaries taught me very little about, like, the afterlife. So I didn't worry about it too much. But as I learned more and more after becoming a member of the church, it's like all these questions. And eternity wasn't the only thing I was worrying about. It was like, well, what about judgment? Well, what about if the small little decision I make is what determines whether I get to this kingdom or that kingdom or whatever? Mm-hmm. And what if, like, oh, my gosh, Jesus Christ doesn't dwell in every kingdom. Oh, my goodness. What does that mean? You know, and just like all these questions. So I've definitely had my freak out moments, but I I converted later in life. So it wasn't when I was eight, but when I was like 20. So (laughs) much later, and it's like, unfortunately, I had more, um, I was more aware than probably an eight year old. So there's a lot deeper questions to, or it felt like there were a lot deeper questions to think about. A few of the things that brought me comfort was like, The plan of salvation is known as the plan of love. We have this graphic that shows that the plan of salvation is literally, it spells out love, right? And those three kingdoms are included in, I think, the E of the word love. Um, It's not just one kingdom. It's not just two kingdoms. It's three of them. 
So if it is part of the plan of salvation, it's, if it is part of the plan of love, God is not going to put you in a place where you don't still feel loved and cared about by him. He's not going to put you in a place where you feel uncomfortable. So we cannot comprehend eternity. We can't comprehend most things that God can. And that's kind of one of the big points of faith, right? So what we can comprehend and what we can understand is that we have a heavenly father who loves us so perfectly that we're not able to replicate that kind of love right now. Um, and we're not able to feel that love from anybody else right now, but Jesus Christ and Heavenly Father, knowing that we will be taken care of in eternity and that it is a greater plan of this perfect kind of love we've never even felt before from anyone else brings me a bit of peace because it's like so great that I can't understand it. Does mm -hmm. that make sense? Yes, completely. In fact, two things come to mind came to my mind when you were talking about this. And the first is you, you talked about how like maybe one decision would change all of that, right? Would change where you end up. Like is is a decision I'm going to make going to be the difference between like exaltation, right? Or like right. the terrestrial kingdom. But I was listening to Elder Oaks. He did a talk about this in the last general conference um, talking about the three kingdoms. And he actually mentioned that it's not so much a, a list of the things you've done like added up you know mm -hmm. when you go to judgment like she did you know this and this and this and this but also didn't do this and this and this like the good and the bad like a tally like a point system right. nothing like that but it's more about who we become and so that so much determines where we go mm -hmm. um because like we're gonna go like you said where we feel the most comfortable where mm -hmm. we can feel our greatest capacity of like love and and also the the second thing um is just like that we don't comprehend it yet mm -hmm. like i think that with the veil you know our minds are just still so mortal and we don't like comprehend eternity maybe like we would i don't know once the veil is lifted i don't know that's just speculation for me um because like right now it's so hard to wrap my mind around that concept or like of like this eternal love and eternal families and and like this eternal progression but like it exists and it's everything we're just this like tiny part of life is just so like a pinprick but it's also so important i think that we might be surprised with how unsurprising eternity is Does that makes sense like because we're in it right now like mm -hmm. we're eternal beings right now i mean we're mortal we're gonna lose the physical body for a time but our spirits are eternal and it's, it's you know there's another there's another day tomorrow, you know, like <laughs> it's just that <laughs> forever. I don't know. For me, I I I would be more anxious about the alternative to eternity than I am about eternity. Like like nothing is scarier is terrifying. to me than never endingness. Totally. I'm excited <laughs> about eternity. Like I'm I'm really looking forward to it. I, I love the, the concept of progression in our faith that like, like eternity isn't just for like sitting around eating your favorite Cheetos forever. I don't mm -hmm. know. Like it's not just like partying and or playing a harp. And I'm not saying that other Christian faiths believe that, but I love that we have like a pretty, we don't know everything by any means. Like there are so many unanswered questions, but I feel like we know quite a bit. And, and I love the idea that we're going to be learning for eternity that we're going to be progressing and i love um kind of where like traditionally you know science and religion i think you know butt heads a little bit or we interpret them as butting heads even if they don't but i love that like knowledge is holy and mm. and and you know a, a good thing like all good things come from god math comes from god you know yeah for the, sure the observation of nature and natural law comes from god and so i am thinking that we're just going to be learning all those all those things you will be taking advanced eternity. physics yeah well like... that's that's one of the things that like we take with us after this life or the things that we've learned and the relationships that we've made and i'm excited about both of those things to to continue for eternity like there are so many things that I want to learn, but I'm just like, I'm too dumb for this. Like, it's not, it's, it's not going to happen in this life. <laughs> Maybe if I tried. You know, I don't really know. Hard. David's saying I'm too dumb for this. I don't, I don't think that really makes sense coming out of David's mouth. But. Some, well, some <laughs> things I can handle. Some things are just like, 
man, that's, that's not going to happen. But, but I look forward to one day, like having the opportunity to, you know, have my mind cleared of all of these random movie facts and <laughs> be instead filled with, you know, quantum mechanics and all that stuff that like that God uses, you know, to, to create the things that we enjoy. And I just think that uh, it's an exciting concept. Going off of that, Brett and I actually talk about this all the time, about how like life is kind of like training wheels for all the stuff we're going to do in the yeah. next life. It's like it's almost like there's a parallel in what we're doing now and what we're going to be doing in the future. Like even down to things like when I am like this is like a dumb example, but when I'm like decorating my house, like I, mm -hmm. I love interior design and I love doing things like those kinds of concepts like God interior designed the earth, you know, like he. The you know, like, he's designer. the ultimate interior exterior designer <laughs> landscaper like or or when we're planting plants and taking care of these plants in our yard or just like struggling with this like relationship thing or even like something we're doing for work you know all of this adds to who we're becoming and like probably these concepts will carry on like you said into the next life as we're learning to because god knows everything about everything mm -hmm. and if we're going to be like him then Right. We'll I I love that this idea of we're going to bring things from this life, which means that we're in eternity right now. But especially as you had mentioned relationships, right? Um, that's why we have the sealing process. You become sealed to your family for all time and eternity. You become sealed to your spouse for all time and eternity. And and this concept was really interesting for me as somebody who's not sealed to their family and probably won't be in this lifetime. And what I love about that is it's not over after you die. We you we have ceilings that we can perform as proxy for the dead. We can do baptisms for the dead. And I'm probably going to have to take on a lot of that work later on, which is, you know, that's a problem for future Lauren. Not a problem, a privilege for future Lauren. But um, it's it's something interesting to think about, because when I first learned about it, I was like, well, hold on. If it's like the plan of love and plan of happiness um, and like my family supposedly will be at a different kingdom than me, maybe, um, that doesn't seem really like a plan of love or like, you know, have happiness. And um, once I learned about like, we can do work for our ancestors who have passed, it gave me like this, God has really thought of everything, you know? Yeah. Um, and I, I just think it's it's so wonderful because in a way, I've heard of people who have done it before. I haven't had an opportunity to do it yet because I ha just haven't had family like that that has passed right now. But um. I, I've seen from people how it makes them feel even closer with those who have passed, even mm -hmm. if they didn't have a great relationship with them while they were still alive, which mm -hmm. I think is fascinating. Yeah. Even if they didn't know them at all. Yeah. Even if they were born in the 1800s, like there's something about that, those ties, that spirit of Elijah mm -hmm. is so real. And I, I love that something. it's, it's part of a plan that maximizes returns. I have this conversation more often than I probably should. But one of the challenges I have with kind of traditional Christianity is like, oftentimes this isn't, I'm generalizing here and not all Christians believe this way, but, but some believe that, you know, if you don't, if you don't believe in Jesus the way I do, then you're going to hell, which mm -hmm. means that the vast majority of all of humanity is going to hell by, mm -hmm. by those, by that standard. And I'll push back on that. But then the comment that I often receive is, well, Latter-day Saints believe the same thing, that if you don't become a Latter-day Saint and live like a Latter-day Saint, then you don't go to the celestial kingdom, which is basically the same thing as, you know, going to hell, heaven, mm -hmm. heaven and hell. hell. Yeah. And it's like, absolutely not. <laughs> like, it is massively different. Like, right. like the traditional Christian hell versus the terrestrial and telestial kingdoms. Which surpass all understanding. Yeah. Like. Vastly, it's quoted in the scriptures. <laughs> vastly different. Like even if you do end up in the terrestrial or telestial kingdom, you're still going to have the opportunity to be visited by deity, by Christ or the Holy Ghost on occasion. And so you're not completely separated from God. There's still opportunity there. There's still nuance there. And if you think about, you know, you have to become a Latter-day Saint to go to heaven. The vast majority of people that I expect to see in the celestial kingdom I'm being presumptuous, assuming that I'll end up there, which may or may not be the case. But if I do, the vast majority of people that are going to be there are not going to have been members of our faith in this life. Mm -hmm. Like, think about the number of, of, of children who die before the age of accountability that are yeah. going to be saved. 
they weren't members of our faith. Think about, you know, people with, with disabilities that, that didn't have the mental capacity yet of someone of the age of accountability. They're going to be saved. You know, think about uh, all the vicarious ordinances we do for people who, who, you know, never even heard about Jesus. They don't become members of our church because we do vicarious ordinances for them. Like when we do baptisms for the dead, those people don't become part of our church. They receive the ordinances of the gospel, but but that's, you know, we're not tallying them on our membership records, you know? Yes, exactly. So I think that it's, that this is a huge reason why I'm a member of this church, because the plan, like when I think of a loving God, I think of a God who wants to save as many of his children or creations as he can. Mm -hmm. And this is the only plan that I've found that does that without violating, you know, the law of justice. Um, so anyways, I could ramble about this, but I, I just, I think it's a beautiful plan that maximizes returns, that is extremely merciful, but is also fair, but it's, it's nuanced and it's not, you know, just all or nothing. And it resonates deep, deep within my soul. And I'm excited to participate in it. Mm -hmm. Me too. It makes total sense, honestly. And it made me think of that. Uh, I know it's like always referenced, but like the South Park episode. And I don't even watch <laughs> South Park, but I've just seen it. And they all get to heaven and they're like, it was the Mormons that were right. <laughs> like, I don't think it's going to quite be like that. Well, but they, like, were, you all, they about... were all in hell, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. They were all in hell. That's <laughs> and right. And if the Mormons were right, then they wouldn't have been there to yes, begin with. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> Oh. That's so true. But yeah, it's not so much. I love that you pointed out like it's not so much about telling like, oh, if you're a Latter day Saint, then you'll make it like that's just what we call ourselves in this life, like because we are members of the church. But like it's the ordinances and the yeah those things that are important, which in the spirit world, I don't know. When people are being taught in the spirit world, I don't think they're going to be like, I don't know. I don't know. Baptized. A member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints, I guess. I don't know well, where I'm going with that thought. I, I, well, currently, Maybe. when you're baptized, you become a a member of the church. Yes. Um, but like in the words of the ordinance, that's not like part of the ordinance itself. Like I think it's more of like a you're baptized. Oh, also like here's your membership record. But like the purpose of baptism is very different from like. The purpose isn't to become a member per se. Mm -hmm. uh, it's to, you know, it's to dedicate your life to Christ, cleanse of your sins, make a covenant with Christ, start a relationship with Christ, which is, is different. But anyways, I, I have a question. Okay. What are um, some unanswered or unanswerable questions that you guys have about eternity that you're curious to learn more about? Oh, one for me. That's such a good question. If um. My husband were to pass away, heaven forbid, um, don't even like to think about that. But if he were to pass away and if I were to like remarry, um, say he passed, like if he were to pass away within the next like couple years, then I'd still have like my whole life and say I marry someone else. I, I won't be sealed to that person, but I've also spent half my life with this person. Hmm. Um, I I know that in in the eternity is like. Like you mentioned, it will all work out and we'll be happy no matter what. But also, how is that stuff going to play out? A and it's been emphasized that in regards to ceilings, we will not have to be sealed to someone that we don't want to be sealed to. Um, it's all very much based on your choice. There's no forced ceilings. There's no forced polygamy. There's no none of that. Like, that's one question I would like... Are you just going to be happy with like two partners? You know what I mean? Or like, yeah. or would you want to be sealed with that person who you married for time and just for life? Like, will you want to be sealed with them later, but you're sealed to someone else? Mm. Anyway, I always think of the spousal stuff. I had but. dinner with a sister from a family ward, like soon after I converted and she was older, maybe in her eighties. And she, she had the same concern because for, for the I want to say like tw her 20s, she was married to someone and she was sealed to him and then he passed away. And then she married someone else and she spent the majority of her life with him. And then he had passed away recently. And she told me though she was sealed to her first husband, she wishes she would have been sealed to her second one. But she seemed so much at peace when she told me that because what she said next was, I don't know. And I don't, I won't really fully know until I get there, but 
I know that God wants us to be happy. And I do fully believe that whatever happens when I get there will allow for that. Um, God knows our heart. He knows what we desire and he knows what's going to bring us the most fulfillment, especially in eternity. So I just hope and I pray and I know that that's what's going to happen. And I yeah. think, you know, that doesn't really give us an answer. And sometimes I can be obsessive about an answer, but <laughs> um, it does give us hope. And I think that's that's important. Definitely. And I have always felt that felt that hope. Um, that it's completely going to work out. Mm -hmm. So I have never really given it too much thought, but it will be interesting to see, you know, how that plays out. And it leads to one of the questions that I have about eternity, which is just like, what the heck does an eternal family look like? Like, what is that? Like your whole family is like, which which of your extended family and like who's living with who or are you like in a mansion or something or like yeah exactly like, <laughs> and what about like in laws you know exactly. what if like what if like you don't get along with them you know yeah. I'm not married so I don't know but you know I've heard stories <laughs> well even if you do like I get along with my in laws love you guys probably don't want to you know be in the same apartment for the time <laughs> you know like and I'm and I'm sure they probably feel the same way about are there me. even apartments I was talking to someone yeah, about I, that I I'm know. like do we have houses is there like Taxes? Like, how does that? I mean, probably not. Like, I don't know. But have you guys watched The Good Place? I've yes, not. I have. That is an interesting show. It is very interesting how they just depict like the afterlife and how they're in heaven and they're in their like nice little houses and stuff. Anyway, it's just an interesting show. It really has nothing to contribute, but it makes you think. Well, I'm, when you were talking about tallies <laughs> earlier of like, you know, what's going to determine if you get into one kingdom or the other? Isn't this one small decision or you did five things wrong and never repented for those things or you didn't remember or whatever. <laughs> and now you can't go to celestial glory. It's not like that. And that's actually what The Good Place depicted. It depicted this tally system. Mm -hmm. And the point of the show was that nobody had the possibility on earth of getting enough good tallies because even when you don't know that you're doing something wrong, you're doing something wrong because of how corrupt the world is. Like if you order um, on Amazon a dress that you like, you might think in your brain, I'm doing nothing wrong. But let's say that dress was made in a sweatshop, mm -hmm. you know, by a child doing child labor and you don't know. That tally was still had held against you in the system created in that show. Mm -hmm. So people would easily rack up negative points to go to the bad place, but it was next to impossible to rack up enough good points to go to the good place. Mm -hmm. So I just love how this life isn't like that. <laughs> <laughs> I remember they were like, you went to a Red Hot Chili Peppers concert once. So oh, yeah. That's <laughs> racked against you. <laughs> anyway, that was off topic. But but yes. In, sorry, go ahead. No, yeah. just going on the how we're going to live in a family is interesting or just like what that's going to look like. Yeah. That's a really good. I think it. It's Question. it's when we get into deeper questions like this, not that they're not good and fun sometimes to think about, but we have to be a little bit careful. Um, I think more of more of us have to be more careful than others. And I say that as someone who's dealt with like you guys know, religious OCD scoop scoop scrupulosity. Yes. That, yeah. that word that I can't pronounce. I haven't been diagnosed with it, but I've been diagnosed with regular OCD. And like I've dipped my toe into religious OCD a little bit, because when you have OCD, as you learn how to treat it and manage it, it can bleed into other things as well, mm -hmm. especially things where you're where there's rules to follow and you're concerned with being a perfectionist in a way, even though that's not really what we're meant to be doing. Right. Like we're supposed to strive for perfection, but also understanding that we can't be perfect. And that's a hard idea to swallow for somebody who's like, I have to be perfect or I'm going to die, you know. Um, and I'm trying to remember the point I was trying to make. So give me a second here. You're talking <laughs> about about. Um... Uh, it oh, we have to be too. careful. We, <laughs> we, have, the to, we have to be care or the ca careful about. Yeah, just we like... have to be careful about thinking. And I think that's because it can lead us down a path where we become that um, overly concerned eight-year-old or twenty-year-old having a mental breakdown <laughs> about something that we don't need to really be concerned with. I mean, of course, we have to be concerned with eternity, but not to the depths that we might think we do, because everything that we think about for eternity should lead us back to thinking about the present moment, because really that's all we can control. I mean, and I can even get deeper into this with too many people being concerned about the past decisions they've made or too concerned about future things that are to come when the present moment is really what we need to be concerned with because that's where change can happen. That's where repentance can happen. That's where our little everyday decisions, we can catch ourselves being like, wow, I was about to tell a little white lie. That's probably unnecessary for me to tell. And we can make that adjustment. Not if you tell that white lie, you're going to go to hell. You know, that's not how it works. But 
It's just things like that where if we become too overly concerned with salvation and eternity and things that we don't fully understand right now, one, I feel like it goes against us trusting the Lord's plan for us. It goes against us trusting that he is going to provide for us eternal happiness as long as we're trying our best. And two, I feel like it puts us in a place where we can become overly guilty and feel a lot of shame about things we don't necessarily need to feel about. Does that make sense? That's interesting. And and I think that how you said that is a, is a great place where we can kind of wrap this up. Um, I mean, President Nelson did say to to not be myopic and to have like where, where we're so short sighted that we're only thinking about our, our mortal things and, and the things that we're concerned with in this life to also have a understanding of the grand scheme of things. But also we don't want to like worry so much about it that it cripples us now. Right. Unanswered questions. God's going to work it out. Yeah, it, it is. It's important not to know everything because I think unanswered questions turn us to the Lord. Mm-hmm. They turn us to him to to find answers or to to wait, to wait patiently on the Lord. So, yeah, I guess that's what we'll be doing. I think that makes it a little more exciting anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Just to not not know all the stuff that's going to come. It's yeah. pretty exciting. But yeah. Hey, thanks for watching with us today. Um, if you have any questions or any of your own thoughts, please leave them in the comments. And uh, yeah, we love you guys and we'll see you next time.